Hello there and good morning. As the last US soldier leaves Kabul airport, the Taliban celebrates and the West goes into shock. As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. And when subscribing, please do press that little bell, but also select the All option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. As the night vision goggle green image of Major General Chris Donahue, the last US soldier to leave Afghanistan, appears on our front pages, the Taliban start to celebrate their historic victory, and the West goes into shock and a blame game. And UK military planners are already looking at securing operating bases close to Afghanistan to launch RAF strikes against potential ISIS threats in the recently exited, now Taliban-controlled state. But here's something. Right now, the UK and French are putting together a UN motion to set up a safe zone in Kabul airport to continue humanitarian operations like getting eligible people out of the country with the talk being that UK troops could be deployed to secure that safe zone. So an ignominious US-led retreat, followed by setting up shop in the airport. It seems that the West had to be seen to publicly withdraw in totality. 100% defeated, chased out by the fear of bombs and bullets, before there could be any talk of meekly requesting for a humanitarian hub at the airport. I cannot believe that this humanitarian hub is a new idea. But why now? Why not months ago as part of the withdrawal plan? No, it's almost as if the withdrawal plan had to include an anti-West statement. A statement designed to make us in the West look weak-willed and ineffectual. A message that the Taliban and religious extremism are the new world. A plan where the Taliban had to be shown across the planet as being the one and only dominant and legitimate force in Afghanistan. A plan where the US especially had to be 100% eradicated from the country in as humiliating a manner as possible before then being forced to negotiate going forwards from a position of inferiority. Take a look, for example, at the US overnight and unannounced flit from Bagram, leaving all that military kit to be found by a bemused but very content Taliban. With one beaming Taliban leader telling the Times, Never in our wildest dreams could we have believed we could beat a superpower like America with just our Kalashnikovs. And Bagram was the US operational hub, but just given up, so putting their forces on the ground on the back foot. Surely that wasn't part of the plan, but it seems to have been written and conducted in that way. And it's all been achieved in a very short order time by the Biden administration. A withdrawal plan successfully set up for failure, if you see what I mean. But looking to the future, surely all these plans of setting up RAF strike bases or humanitarian hubs would be reliant on some form of US help, at least in the short term. And does the US now have the stomach for it? And more importantly, will the trust be there? Possibly not while Joe Biden or his, at the moment, Vice President Kamala Harris sits in the White House. Although they will be looking for face-saving drone strikes. And now we learn that the Pentagon is blaming the UK for the suicide bomb deaths last week. The US, it appears, are saying they kept the Abbey Gate open to facilitate UK evacuation efforts, and that put US troops in the firing line, they say. Totally ignoring the fact that this was a US-instigated, US-forced and US-hurried withdrawal, a near-panic US retreat, in fact. The way I look at it is, a withdrawal is where you leave as planned, taking everyone and everything with you. A retreat is where you are forced to go early 
and leave people and assets behind. I'll leave you to work out which of those you've just witnessed when you consider the number of people that have been left behind to the mercies of the Taliban fighters and the 85 billion US dollars worth of pristine military hardware bristling with the latest technology that Biden the betrayer somehow forgot to deal with. So no, it wasn't a withdrawal, it was a rout. The result being becalmed, rudderless and shocked Western powers. So what do you think about this whole debacle? Please like and comment below.